Murat and Bellini cross Niagara Falls, Emily Arnold Macaulay. Every evening, Murat and Bellini were guests of honor at the captain's table on the SS Magnifique, bound for New York. Let us salute our brave companions, the captain said. Soon all America will know of their courage and skill. Murat and Bellini were the most famous wire walkers in all of Europe. They had just accepted an invitation to cross Niagara Falls. On calm days, Murat and Bellini practiced on deck. They could see steerage passengers below, traveling with everything they owned. One afternoon, Murat noticed a boy gazing at her and a broad smile. He did a pantomime of wire walking and applauded himself. Murat laughed. The next morning, when Murat was practicing alone, the boy suddenly appeared. Bravo, he said softly. He held out a strange little pastry. For you. Thank you, she said. A steward called out. You there, go back where you belong. The boy darted off. At dinner, Murat filled her napkin with fruits and tarts for her new friend. She was sure he would come back, and in the evening he did. They sat on a stair on the boat deck. Between bites, Jacob told her he was Polish. His parents had died, and now he was going to live with an uncle in New York. The next day, Murat introduced Jacob to Bellini. I too was an orphan at your age, Bellini told him. I want to become a great man like you, Jacob said. In America, it is possible. One morning, a few days later, they heard shouts, land, there she is, Miss Liberty. The Magnifique eased into a berth on the Hudson River. Everyone got off the steerage passengers, except the steerage passengers, who had to go on to Ellis Island. Murat was very sorry to be parted from Jacob, but Bellini surprised her. We had better stay with Jacob, he said, until he meets his uncle. Move along, stupid. Hurry up there, shouted the officials as they herded the steerage passengers onto a ferry. There it is, the Island of Tears, a man said. If you are sick or no one comes to meet you, they'll send you back. Murat and Bellini waited on a balcony of the enormous hall while Jacob was checked. Jacob grinned up at them. Just then, a man pulled him out of line and they disappeared through a doorway. That looks like trouble, Bellini said, come. They found Jacob in a room marked special inquiry. He must stay here, an officer said. No one has come for him. In a few days, we'll put him back on a boat. Jacob's eyes welled with tears. But he is with me, Bellini said, he is my assistant. Bellini signed papers and they were soon on their way. We will find your uncle when we get back to New York, said Bellini. For now, you'll have to come with us. I come to New York City and right away I go to Niagara Falls, Jacob said. Already I have found opportunity in America. They boarded a train that ran along the Hudson River to Albany, then west to Niagara Falls. Arriving at the station, they saw posters announcing their crossing. The newsboys were shouting, extra, extra. Patch says he will surpass Bellini. What does this mean? Murat said. Apparently this Mr. Patch has challenged us, said Bellini. If it is a fair contest, we will win. At the hotel, Bellini booked rooms for the week. Mr. Patch is already here, the clerk said. The whole world is coming to see if his crossing is more spectacular than yours. A man with a notebook said, from the New York world, how will you prove that you are still the world's greatest wire walkers? That will be a surprise, said Bellini. Here comes Patch, someone called. I am the greatest high wire walker in America, Patch boasted. I will perform a feat that no one has ever attempted on the high wire. He has a trick up his sleeve, Bellini whispered to Mirat and Jacob. While Jacob guarded the door, Bellini and Mirat planned their crossing. I want to stand on your shoulders, Mirat said. I did it in Vienna. 
This will be very different from Vienna, Bellini said. There is the wind and the noise and the cable is much longer. I can do it, Murat said. Outside, Patch was telling reporters that Murat and Bellini would fall. On the morning before the crossing, Bellini supervised the installation of the wire. 2,000 foot length of hemp cable was ferried across the river and stretched from the American to the Canadian's bank. It was wound around spools placed in holes drilled into the rock of the cliff and pulled tight by teams of horses. To keep it from swaying, guy wires were attached at 24 foot intervals and secured to spikes on the shore. Get used to the noise and the tumbling of the water, Bellini said. It will inspire you. And Mirette and Jacob let themselves be filled with the roar of the rapids. The day of the crossing dawned sunny and mild with light winds. Patch had picked a spot for himself downriver. That gentleman doesn't want anyone to get a good look at his crossing, Bellini said. I will go to see if I can find what trick he has in his sleeve, said Jacob. And he ran off along the riverbank. Patch's camp was heavily guarded. Jacob managed to creep close enough to see that their, revi their rival was preparing to cross on a bicycle. But the bicycle was attached to the wire. There was no way Patch would fall. His crossing would look death-defying and yet be perfectly safe. Jacob raced back to tell Bellini and Mirat. As he ran, a movement caught his eye. A man was bending over Mirat and Bellini's central guy wire. When he hurried away, Jacob could see nicks in the wire. Mirat and Bellini must be warned. Jacob ran as fast as he could, but it was too late. Bellini and Mirat had stepped onto the wire. Jacob shouted, but the tumult of the falls drowned his words. When the crowd saw that Murat was riding on Bellini's shoulders, people screamed and a few fainted. Bellini walked at a steady pace, the wire vibrating and swaying in the breeze. His balance pole dipped gently up and down. Down river, Patch pedaled, raised his arms in the air, reversed a few yards, then inched forward again. He bowed this way and that to the cheers of his distant supporters. Jacob started across the bridge. Murat and Bellini reached the middle of the chasm when suddenly their wire jerked violently. Bellini pitched sideways, his balance bowl churning in the air. Slip down on my shoulders, he shouted, desperately trying to regain his balance. He broke into a run. Murat realized that a guy wire had snapped. Their only hope was to reach the next brace of wires. Bellini ran in a crouch as the rope swung from side to side. The guy wires were just ahead but one of them, unable to bear the pressure, also snapped. The main rope swerved in the opposite direction. But Bellini managed to sprint to the last guy wires. They howled. Finally, Mirat and Bellini ascended the steep incline to the American bank. An incursion boat whistled and the crowd reached out their hands to pull the pair to safety. Men and women cried and the bands blared. As soon as Mirette and Bellini stepped onto land, reported shot, reporters shouted questions. When the guy wires snapped, it became extremely difficult, Bellini told them, but Mirette remained perfectly focused. Why do you think they broke? A reporter called. Jacob pushed his way through the crowd. I saw a man cut Bellini's guy wires, he called, and Mr. Patch used a trick bicycle. The crowd gasped. Arrest the scoundrel, people shouted. Do not let him get away. The next day, all the newspapers had pictures of the Great Crossing and of Jacob. Boy saw wires cut, boy nails fraud. Jacob, you're already famous in America, said Murat. Just then, there was a knock on the door. A man stood out his outside, hat in hand. Please, is Jacob here? I saw his picture in the newspaper. I am his uncle, Menachim. Here I am, cried Jacob. I was told the wrong boat, Menachim explained. I waited, waited, and waited. Well, it turned out all right, Mirat said. Now you and Jacob 
have found each other. They all boarded a train for New York City, grateful for the fortunate turn of events. When Mirette and Bellini embarked for Europe a few days later, Jacob and Menchin were there to see them off. Jacob, you will make a fine American, Bellini said. And as for me, I will be glad to be back in Paris. Au revoir, dear friend, said Mirette to Jacob. That means goodbye until we meet again.